Now let's talk education and the teacher union strike that is in the second day actually and so they started officially yesterday and yesterday we had one of the reps from the teacher union Mr. Hinakwa come in the studios to explain to us why the teachers are still insisting on embarking on this strike even though the GES has expressed shock after many deliberations and explanations and some anomalies that they cited in their statement as well. And so this morning we have the chairman of the Ghana Education Service Council, Mr. Michael Nsoa, joining us on the show. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine, Bella. I, I can imagine the headache. Oh, it's not a headache. It's it, not? We've gone through that before. I yes. Have, uh, because I was in yeah. that position. And, yeah. uh, Sometimes it's because people don't understand the issues very well. And uh, uh, maybe they, 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 as, it, as part of emotions, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we need to look at the logic of all this. And yeah. That's why we think, yeah, it's we, need, we need to clarify some of these issues. True. Let's talk about the anomalies, first of all, that she cited in the statement that was released. Now, yesterday when Mr. Hinakwa joined us, he clearly indicated that he didn't understand why the GES had put this statement out because there were a lot of false um, you know, um, things that were said in the statement. First of all, he said that the Auditor General um, had already gone through some of these issues. And so if the list was put out and they've been able to verify that all these people are eligible for legacy areas, they don't understand why uh, some time after the Ghana Education Service will publish this and say this is the reason why we've had to delay uh, payment of legacy arrears. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, normally, vouchers have to be verified before payment is made. Mm. Now, this issue about legacy arrears has to be vetted because along the line, some of the teachers became frustrated and therefore left the system. Others continue, but with intermittent, you know, uh, breaks, not going to work mm -hmm. uh, every day, every week, and so all these things we got the information from our attendance sheet. Okay. So yes, some people can go to the field and say that, oh, are they there? Yes, physically they are there, but from our records, because once you sign the attendance sheet, that is what is going to use to, you know. And because all of them were aware of this attendance sheet? Everybody. I mean, it is part of civil service aid mm. that in any workplace or in the schools or in education institution, you need. I mean, it's done everywhere. It's not. Some people have even digitized it. Mm. So if you get the information, you should, you'll be able, because if you don't work for 10 continuous days, we give you half of your salary. All right. If it is 15 working days, we assume you have vacated your post, so you will not be paid. Yes, these are things everybody knows. So uh, if somebody goes to the field and says, oh, I met Bella physically there, yes. But from our records, Bella has never signed attendance. So who said that that day that this exercise was going to happen, Bella appeared and therefore Bella... Uh, that she should yeah. be paid. No. But, I mean, some of these issues, I, I'm a bit confused because for people who were paid a double salary, um, you know, arrears and all of that, how did you not notice some of these issues? Because we believe that there's a system, and if you go through that system, then it should be easy to detect some of these problems even before you make payments. You see, the committee working on this, verifying, com comprises the union's representative, mm -hmm. management representative, auditor general and the controller. They are all there, verifying. All right. It is possible some people submitted uh, documents and maybe they were called that, oh, uh, we can't trace your document. So another one, later on this one also, and you know, with the numbers, it is possible, I'm not saying that this yeah, is what happened, yeah. with your numbers, you are likely to have one or two that can pass without notice. So. Uh, but don't we have a database? Should we not be operating with a database so that if you've entered someone's details already, then it should, you know, the moment you try again, it should alert you that this person is already in the system? Yes, it is possible. I mean, uh, I, I will not fault the committee, mm -hmm. but this is a slip that has happened. It was detected that, no, 
this one has been paid already. So why was this second yeah. payment? Yeah, um, I, I don't want to so blame, mean that blame, the, blame on, on any, anyone. Yeah. Doesn't mean the council does not have an excuse because the teachers are still insisting. Um, and I want to know when you, you know, found out some of these problems and if you communicated duly to the teachers before they decided to embark on this drive. Look, this exercise started in 2017. Mm. So they are doing it gradually. I mean, as and when the uh, vouchers are passed as, or vetted and having passed through the system, then they are, they are submitted for payment. Mm -hmm. And it has to be verified by GES. So along the line, maybe a couple of them have, but this one, this last batch, the last one that has come now, which is uh, creating all this problem, yeah. there were as many as 500 you know, discrepancies mm -hmm. noticed. As many as 500? Yeah. Because, uh, for various reasons. One, uh, some of them are, you are a pupil teacher. Mm -hmm. You don't have any rank. Okay. And yet the calculation was based on a senior superintendent, mm -hmm. meaning you've been in the system for more than uh, mm -hmm. uh, six or eight years. And, 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 and that shouldn't be the case. So this is, you know, this teacher is a pupil teacher, doesn't deserve this. Yeah. Some people were also uh, downgraded. A senior superintendent giving, you know, uh, first entry teacher and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So if they discover, oh, people have, the calculation was based on a different rank for some teachers. Mm -hmm. Like the case of the, the director you mentioned, a lady in her office, oh, sorry, a lady in his office, yeah. you know, her calculation was based on night watchman allowance. Yeah. How can that lady be a watchman? Mm. So if we discover these things and uh, we draw the attention of, please suspend payment until we have exhausted everything. I mean, were the teachers informed? Were the unions informed ahead of time? Look, the unions are part of the committee. So from 2017, when we started paying, based on the vetted uh, uh, vouchers. Mm -hmm. So this has been the process. Okay. So I don't know why all of a sudden it has become an issue. Mm -hmm. If they say that we should pay them all before they go back to work. Why is it that when we started paying and they said, oh, uh, the first payments that were made, it didn't cover everybody. There were as many as 120 teachers mm -hmm. involved. Yeah. And gradually, up to, up to this point, we've done vetted about 92,000. About 92,000. 92,000. All right. And we have paid 80, uh, 87,000 and so of them All right. have been paid. And that's why the director general said, look, out of the vetted one, 95,000 have been paid. We, we, we are not denying that we still have to cover the 120,000, mm -hmm. which is ongoing. Okay. It's ongoing. All right. So it then, doesn't mean we have stopped. It's ongoing. All right. So, and the unions are aware. As and when vouchers are approved or vetted by the uh, Auditor General, it comes for payment. Mm. Yeah. So, I don't so, know. What happens what? to the children then? Because these teachers are saying that they want their money and there's nothing that they will listen to. If their monies don't hit their accounts, they are not going back to the classroom. Fine, so we are talking about 30,000 teachers mm -hmm. and not 350,000 uh, staff. Okay. All right? Yeah. So what is the basis for saying, I have been paid, but I'm not going to work. Somebody has asked me not to go to work. I will sympathize with those who have not been paid. Yeah. And even that, those that are not be our legacy areas, mm -hmm. area we inherited, okay. which they should have been paid between 2012 and 2016. Yeah. So why, why were they not paid at that time? And now that this government is trying to pay them, it said, if you don't pay, we won't go to... Or all those, if you take 30,000 out of the 350,000, so 300,000 teachers mm -hmm. or staff, don't have issue now. So why should all of them? Because it's a union, and so they work well, in unity. Who employs you as a, as a worker? OK. Yeah. The government employs you. You have your contract with the government. You don't have your contract with the union. But is it not we a know, that even if We I'm know, yes, there? they're fighting on your behalf. Mm -hmm. But those who have been, uh, who don't have an issue, 300,000 of them don't have an issue. So they should go back to the classroom. Why not? Is it not <laughs> logical? But what's the that guarantee if, that if they go back to the classroom, their colleagues will be paid? They know the system, the process is ongoing. It hasn't stopped. Okay. 
So why would you think that? Well, uh, it's uh, maybe it's your luck that y yours was paid earlier. What about those who were paid 2018 up to this point? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a process. Okay. It's a process. So it's looking like they are saying, uh, if we don't get it now, we won't get it again. And, and, and that's unfair. When will they get it? When will they get it? They know. They are part of the committee that is working on it. Okay. They are represented fully. But parents so they want know. to know as well. But they parents know. want to know because they are concerned about their children. If my child is going to school and there's no teacher to teach them, then I should be worried. Yes, certainly. And we are working on that. Okay. We have informed all the regional directors and district directors to, to monitor the uh, attendance. Okay. Now, when I said this, uh, you know, the uh, union leader said he, uh, you know, he's taking exception to what I said. This is something that is done every day. Look, if the children go to school and there are no teachers, imagine the chaotic scene that you have. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, some teachers are still at post working, and we thank them for that. Right. So that we are monitoring. Give us a report. What is the situation in your district, in your school? If the situation is very serious, we may, we may decide maybe to close down the schools in that district. But if there are some teachers, okay. if there are some teachers who can take care of the children, if it becomes necessary, let, let them inform us so that we'll be able to maybe find volunteers to go and make sure that the children are safe. Okay. The first thing is to make sure that the they are safe, safe yeah. in the school. But if you and close down, what no, happens to the children? No, you I might. Said if said it if. becomes, I am not saying, that's why we are monitoring. Unfortunately, I monitor the, the, the reports from the uh, districts and regions say that it is not as hopeless as uh, people might think. There are still, there are many of the teachers at post. Mm. So, yes. Are you still engaging with the teachers currently? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Is that progress being made? No. Yesterday, the uh, Minister for Labor and Employment, you know, uh, wanted to, you know, uh, resolve that issue. So yeah. they called a meeting. We were going to meet the uh, Labor Commission and report the, uh, the union's action. The Minister for Labor and, and Employment decided to intervene. Mm -hmm. So uh, our representatives were with the minister and the unions uh, the whole day yesterday. At the end of the day, uh, they couldn't reach uh, any consensus. So uh, today, they are continuing. They are continuing. They are continuing. Yeah. Okay. Then we're keeping our fingers crossed. Hopefully, we can make some progress today yeah, sure. so our we teachers can to, get back. We have to make progress okay. because it is uh, part of our responsibility to make sure that the children are safe and while they are in school, they are being taught. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael Nsoa. He's the chairman of the Ghana Education Service Council. He's been speaking to us about the strike by the teachers union and... Well, there's a meeting today, and so we're looking forward to some positive results. Hopefully, the teachers can return to the classrooms by tomorrow. And so thank you so much. Okay, thank welcome. you very much. All right. So